Today I'm going to show you how to upload a custom bootloader to an Arduino. I'm going to be using a Pro Mini here. And I'm also going to use a USB ASP device. Um, before I show you how to do that though, I want to talk about why you might want to upload a custom bootloader to a Arduino. So for me, I've needed to do it a few different times and um, they've ranged from getting more space from the Pro Mini. Uh, the stock bootloader uses two kilobytes. Uh, and if you upload a custom one using the OptiBoot, you can get it down to 512 bytes, so you get a little more room for your code. Uh, and then the other reason is um, if you want to upload a special bootloader that has a special purpose. So my sensors has a custom bootloader that allows for over-the-air updates. So you can upload that to your Pro Mini, and then you can uh, upload your code uh, over the air or wirelessly without having to plug it in. Uh, and that has been incredibly useful for me uh, when I have remote nodes or nodes that I don't want to dig out to update the code. So as I said before, I'm using the USB ASP. It's a version 2, uh, and I got this one on eBay for just a couple bucks. Um, you can use an Arduino Uno, which I've tested before and had mixed results, which is why I switched over to this guy here. Uh, once I had the cables connected like this, I labeled them and I've never had an issue um, with any miswiring or wires being too long, bad connection, any of that. So I use this. Uh, it's super simple um, and plus I don't have to tie up my Pro, or sorry, my Uno to upload um, a bootloader. So um, one of the things that was a struggle for me when I first started out was knowing how to connect in the wires. There's a lot of different wiring diagrams. Some of them are reversed, um, things like that. So I'm going to show you here how I have it connected up. And then as you can see, I just taped it off and labeled it. So then any other time I want to upload, I can just connect it in to my Pro Mini and I'm off uh, and running. So I'm going to try and do this so you can all see it. Uh, first we have on this side, so this is the bottom, we have VCC and ground. So we have a little jumper here that's going to allow for, if you can see it, 5 volts or 3 volts. Uh, I upload mine at 5 volts. And I, um, yeah, like I said, connect in the VCC and the ground. So 5 volts and ground on this side. So 5 volts is the first pin, and then the second pin is ground. I don't know if you can see it here, but the next two pins on this side are not used, so uh, they will be um, disconnected or not connected. Okay, next we have, from the, this side here, we have MOSI, then we have RESET, then we have SCK, or Serial Clock, and then the last one down is MISO. So that is how you would connect those into the USB ASP. And then if you go down here, you can hopefully see it. So the um, serial clock is going to pin 13 on my Pro Mini. And then the green wire here, which was MISO, is going to go to pin 12 on the Pro Mini. And then finally we have the white wire, which is MOSI which will go into pin 11 on the Pro Mini. Okay, and then on the other side we have VCC, which goes into the 5 volts on the Pro Mini. Then we have ground, which would obviously go to ground on the Pro Mini. And then the reset goes to reset on the Pro Mini. So hopefully you can see that. This is how I just have it labeled or connected in so I don't ever have to double check. I just taped it up and then 11, 12, 13, 5 volts reset and ground connects into the top of the Pro Mini, or sorry, the Pro Mini pin headers like that. Okay, so that's the wiring and that's um, the device I use. Let's go over and take a look at the computer side of things um, to show you how to get it all uploaded. Oh yeah, and obviously just connecting it in, it just plugs into the USB port of your computer here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is install the driver for the USB ASP device. So to do that, I actually found that if I went to the website for the USB ASP, 
that the driver wasn't signed, so uh, Windows 8 and above doesn't like that. So instead, if you go and download the ZADIG tool, however you pronounce that, uh, and I'll put a link to that in the video description, you can add the correct driver, and I'll show you that now. So just obviously open up the application. Then what you're going to do is you're going to list all your devices, and it's already found my USB ASP. If it didn't find it for you, uh, you can just click the drop down. Then you'll uh, select the driver. So you can see that I already have this driver installed, uh, and I found that that is the driver that's required for Windows 10. If you're using Windows 8, and presumably lower, you're going to want to use this driver here. At least this was the one that worked for me. So, Windows 8 is the lib USB Win32, and Windows 10 is this one here. Okay, so after you've selected it, you just hit install driver, or replace driver, whatever options available for you, and then it would install that driver to your system. Okay, so now we're going to use AVR Dudis to test our communication with the USB ASP to our Pro Mini. This step is totally optional, but I like to use it just to make sure everything's communicating as I think it should. I'll post a link in the description for the download. So first you need to select a programmer. So the USB ASP is all the way towards the bottom here, fourth from the bottom. And then what you'll do is you will detect the MCU. So if it's working properly, your Pro Mini should say an Atmega 328P, which is great. And then we're also going to read the fuses, just to make sure of that. And you can see it read in our fuses, so it's definitely communicating properly. And we can also see the results down here in the status window. So we are good to go. All right, so we have everything connected and we're almost ready to start burning our bootloader. Now, if this is your first time, and I'm guessing it is, since you're watching this video, um, I would recommend burning uh, a Pro Mini bootloader when you have the resonator connected. Some of them are sold without this resonator. Um, basically what this will allow you to do is recover the bootloader, at least give you better odds of recovering it if you do flash it with the wrong bootloader. So let's say you didn't have this and you flashed a 16 megahertz external oscillator, it may not be able to be reflashed until you connect in an oscillator or resonator. So just a word of caution, you can do some damage. Um, well, I don't want to say damage, but you could potentially brick your device or at least make it harder to recover from a bad bootloader burn. Um, it's not to say that it's impossible to recover, it's just not as easy as reflashing. So if it's your first time, you may want to just use one of the, the uh, Pro Minis that has the resonator on it. Okay, disclaimer out of the way. I am going to use the Arduino IDE um, to burn the bootloader. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is the way I'm going to show. If you don't have the IDE installed and don't know how to do it, I have another video that I'll link to here um, for how to do that, but I'm going to assume you already have it installed. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go to Tools, and we're going to choose our programmer. So in our case, we're going to choose USB ASP, which I already have selected here. And then we're just going to select the board and processor that we want to use, if applicable. So I'm actually going to burn the Arduino Uno bootloader to this Pro Mini. What that will do is it'll use the Optiboot bootloader. And because I have the external resonator at 16 megahertz, um, it will actually allow me to save um, some space in the bootloader and recover some of that uh, memory for my sketch so I can use larger sketches. Um, and because the Uno and the Pro Mini use the same uh, Atmega chip, this works with no problems as long as you're using um, the external resonator. Okay, so I just selected the Arduino Uno here and I already have my programmer selected so I just go to burn bootloader. And you can see down here how fast that was. So this is what the report looks like. Um, I'm not going to go into the details here. Basically what you want to look for down here is done and that it verified 100%. You'll see very quickly if there's any errors. It'll say out of sync or continual try, continually try. 
um, but this was a, um, a successful burn. So that's it. We've burned our new bootloader. If I wanted to go back to the Pro Mini bootloader, I just select it from the boards menu here, choose the Pro Mini, and then I will choose my processor. It's on the one I want here, the 5 volt 16 megahertz burn bootloader. And that's it. It's as easy as that. All right, so what if we wanted to burn a custom bootloader that was not already added to our boards menu here? A perfect example of this is the awesome MyS bootloader created by Olivier or Tekka as he's known on the MySensors forum. Basically what this bootloader will allow you to do is upload sketches either via USB and the FTDI adapter or over the air using the NRF radios. So you can actually upload a brand new MySensor sketch wirelessly without having to connect it. So um, if you're in home automation and you want to do something like that, uh, it's amazing for having those devices, you know, hidden behind objects or inside of objects and you can still upload new code with that bootloader. So anyway, um, let me show you that now. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download the bootloader. So I'm going to go back out to the uh, internet here and I'm going to go to the My Sensors GitHub page. So it's just github.com slash my sensors and I'm going to uh, open up the My Sensors bootloader link here. So then what we're going to want to do the easiest way, we're not going to use all these files, but the easiest way to get them is just to download over here. So I'm just going to download the zip and then I'll open it. Okay, so inside of this zip file, we have multiple files. What we're looking for is the hex file. So a bootloader file is a hex file. So even if you're not using the MySensors bootloader or the MyS bootloader, uh, maybe at the OptiBoot, um, you would look for a hex file and then you'd also want to add um, some text to your existing boards.txt file. Okay, so we need to find the location that we need to put these files. So I actually just found out um, on my Windows 10 PC that it's not in the normal spot that I was looking for um, because I haven't added my bootloaders on my Windows 10 PC yet. So the easiest way to find the location is to go back to the Arduino IDE go to file and then we're going to open up the EEPROM clear example sketch. So it's just going to be down here, EEPROM, EEPROM clear. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the sketch menu and show the sketch folder. This will take us to the location of the example sketches and from there we can find the boards.txt folder as well as the bootloaders folder. So here I'm going to click on the 1.6.15. Your version number may be different. And then we're going to see boards.txt as well as the bootloaders folder. So I recommend creating a copy of your boards.txt file. So if you ever mess it up, you can always get it back. So just right click, copy here. If you want, you can rename it. I'm just going to leave this one alone for now just to save some time. Okay, then we need to go back to our um, downloaded files and open the boards.txt file provided for us. So I'll just double click on here and I'm going to copy this text and I'll go back uh, and I'm going to right click on my boards.txt file and I am going to edit with Notepad++. I have found Notepad++ to be much better uh, than the standard Windows Notepad application. Uh, when I was trying to copy in some text. Somehow it must have copied in some additional symbols or something and messed it up my file pretty good. So I use Notepad++ now. Okay, so I'm just going to paste in that text that was supplied for us. Notice it's given us a name, um, my S bootloader here. Okay, and what we want to look for here is the location. So the my sensors slash my S bootloader dot hex we need to create a my sensors folder inside of our boots bootloaders folder. So I'm going to go back here now, open up my bootloaders folder, and I'll just create a new folder. 
called My Sensors. Okay, open that up, and then I'm going to copy in my bootloader hex file here. Okay, that's it. Now, one last thing. Some of you may be screaming at the screen right now. We need to go back to our boards.txt file. Notice the red. That means it's not saved, so we just need to save it. Otherwise, none of this will work. All right, so now we go back. We have to exit out of the Arduino IDE. All instances, and then we'll relaunch it. So now we can go under Tools, Board, and notice at the bottom we have our My Sensors Bootloader. So just like with the Uno, we just select it, Burn Bootloader, and that is all we need to do. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope it was a helpful video.